I'm Diane Kraft. It's been my privilege to work with bright, hardworking kids who have to work too hard to learn for 25 years. I've worked in the school system, I've homeschooled my son for a while, and this is what I learned. I learned that many children have not developed some good memory strategies, so they struggle and struggle to memorize things. In this segment today, we're going to talk about kids who struggle to learn just plain math facts. You know you have them at home. The kids who, you, and no matter what you do, they never really have figured out how to remember their math facts. Sometimes you think you can't go on to higher processes because they don't remember their math facts. Let's look at why that is and what some ways that you can use to help your child learn easier at home. They'll love you for it because not only will you teach them a good way to learn, you'll show them how to use their own photographic memory for many things other than just math facts. When we use re repetition, saying the multiplication facts over and over, what we're assuming is that the child has a strong auditory processing skills. If your child has an auditory processing glitch, then saying them over and over doesn't hold for them, as you've noticed. Many times we'll just say, well, we'll write the facts over and over and do our quick time tests. But if your child has a dysgraphia or a block in their writing gate, what goes from their head to their hand does not get in the long-term memory, and you've noticed that this method doesn't work for them. So what the other method that parents often use is flashcards, and we're going to look at flashcards in just a second. But let's look at what's going on in the process of the brain. Why is this child having to struggle at something that their brothers and sisters can get so easily or their peers in school can get so easily? We know that the left brain is the auditory hemisphere. We learn through things with the left brain through black and white, through repetition, and that goes into the short-term memory. The whole idea of repetition is that it flows from short-term memory, transfers over the corpus callosum into the right brain where long-term memory is lodged. Since my children had auditory glitches, that was not working. So they were eighth graders and still didn't know math facts, still were not passing tests that they could because they were so smart. So what I did is I abandoned the entire left brain technique and I used right brain strategies that went directly to their long-term memory. What activates the right brain for long-term memory storage? The right brain's visual, so we're gonna treat their brain as a camera. The right brain loves color and picture and weird and humor and emotion. Think Hollywood. All of those pieces of Velcro cause data to be stored here. So the left brain is data. We're going to take that data and put the right brain pieces on it. The brain takes a picture of it with its camera, stores it as a chunk, retrieves it as a chunk, and the multiplication facts sink in with so little effort. So what it's all about is battery use. What we find is these wonderful struggling kids are using way too much battery energy for a process that shouldn't take so much battery energy. So we abandon the old way and do the new way. Sometimes my left brain moms love flashcards. You get them at the grocery store, you love them. Let's think about it. Let's say we have like a, a card that is, you see these flashcards all the time, eight times seven. And your left brain kids who like the black and white and the repetition, and they're saying it to themselves and they're, okay, okay, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. And these right brain kids whom we're teaching to the camera, we're teaching to a child's camera and we put eight times seven, what are they taking a picture of for the answer? They're taking a picture of nothing. So when you say, what's eight times seven, hon? Your right brainers are the ones who are being, going to be looking up with their eyes, but they see the eight times seven picture, but the answer's blank. And their brain doesn't do a virtual tour, which it would be nice if it did. It doesn't do a virtual tour and turn around and find that it is 56 on the back. Let's see, we're gonna to have to stop for a second. So my left brain moms love flashcards because they have them everywhere in the grocery store and they're just so fun to use. Right brain kids don't love them. Let's look at why. Remember the left brain is black and white and auditory. They look like that yeah, eight times seven and then you say 56 and they remember it. Remember for the right brainers, we are teaching to their camera. So they look at eight times seven and they take a picture of what answer? Nothing. So you'll ask your right brain child, what's eight times seven? And they always look up with their eyes and they see the eight times seven, but they see no answer there. Now their brain does not do a virtual tour 
to find the 56 on the back. So we, what we need to do is put it in, in a unit. Now you can do that in one way at home by having them just do eight times seven and put the answer in the front. Remember, we don't just do the answer, we do color, picture, weird, humor, and emotion. That causes it to hold. Sometimes if a child is just a little bit brittle in math, you can just put the answer in front of the color and they'll remember it. My students were more brittle than that. So I needed to use much more Velcro so we could finally get those down. And this is what I did. I made these are Hollywood. And let me just say I'm going to do it like this. We tell the story. We just say, here's an eight-year-old, and he's just nervous, 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 because anytime he wanted to go down the street to play with his friend down here, the neighborhood bully came out. Oh my goodness, look at how big he is and how mean he is. The idea is to take the left brain data and incorporate it, embed it with the right brain picture. So you see the eight-year-old, you can't have an eight down here and a picture up there. That would go into two different places in the brain. It has to be the, the story, emotion embedded on the picture. The same thing here. So we say, okay, so he would go try to go to play with his friend. When the seven-year-old bully came out, it wasn't fair. You see how the seven, the top of the seven is over his shoulders, how he has red hair. And so he was in a quandary. And one day, the dad of the eight-year-old said, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to get a dog for you. And look at the kind of dog he got. It was not a little poodle. Big, mean dog. Look at the collar he put on him. And he named him 56. So whenever he went down the street to play with his friend and the bully would come out, he'd holler, hey, 56, and shoo, the bully went back in. Now, this isn't a character study. This is justice. And the kids like it. Because why? Remember the Velcro that puts things in the right brain long-term memory is color, picture, weird, humor, and emotion. And I know you left brain moms are saying, oh, that's too much. Oh, do I have to remember the story too in the picture? No, you don't. And neither do the kids who get it any other way. But like Brianna, who was learning this her own way, she said, this is the only way I could remember my math facts. Because when you say eight times, what's eight times seven in their mind's eye? This story always comes up. So they see eight times seven is 56. Do you know how then they can do division? 56 divided by eight. Oh yeah, that's the bully, seven. 56 divided by seven, the bully, is eight. They remember this forwards and backwards. So we have made some of these for you. You can make them yourself, but many parents say, can you make them for me? And we have. Here's another one. Here we have a seven-year-old who has, his, his dad made a fort for him, a tree house, and he made this in the apple tree. And he loved playing in his tree house. So one day, I'm going to cover this up, and that is the best way to teach it. One day, he was playing in his treehouse, and a bear came up, because they lived out in the woods. And you'll notice how the six is around the haunches of the bear, and the seven is here. We have to embed. That's the key. So he's hollering, help, help, help. I'm, getting, I'm going to be eaten up. Help me. And nobody could hear him. So he wanted to throw something at the bear to scare him away. So he took the apples from the tree and started throwing them at the bear. And the bear went, oh, and he ate them. And so he said, oh, what's going to happen? He's going to eat all my apples. Well, he found out that day, took 42 apples to get rid of a bear. And I'm going to show you how we're going to teach this and how we're going to get in their long-term memory. Here's another one. It goes like this. It's... There's about a tornado. Remember emotion. Emotion holds. The two houses had tornadoes passing over them. First it was lightning, then it was, was stormy, and then a tornado was coming. And they watched out the window. They were so afraid, so afraid that the tornado went past them. What holds? Emotion and picture. So and one last one, and that is just going to be, sometimes they say, well, we like to use the one that says a four by four goes out the door and came back as 16. Those are great little sayings, but remember, our kids have an auditory processing glitch. The sayings don't hold. We can always count on the universal learning gate. The universal learning gate for these guys is color, picture, weird, and humor. This is just another idea.
where we just have seven times seven. It took two um, scarecrows to scare away the crows. Now look at, with the crows, do you see the visual that holds on to it? The four is over his beak, the nine is over the eyes. That's so visually grabbing that they remember that. So these are the cards that we use and lots of different schools use. And what is the method? So it's a universal learning gate. So what do we do? We are going to choose four hard facts. Four that they, they, they don't know. They know their twos and their zeros and the ones. Four that they don't know. Put them up high because they know the physiological movement of the eyes up causes the right brain to light up. See, so put them up high. You can put them on a bookshelf and have him look at, like, say, the crow's one. And then look at a blank wall. And he has to tell you everything about that picture. The color, the story, everything about it, like a photograph. And then we do that with the other one. We do that with four cards. And we have eyes up, and they have to repeat exactly what they saw. They do the times, forwards, and backwards, and the division. And then we do that five days in a row. Each day, we are cementing it more and more into the imaging side of their brain where the long-term memory is stored. We call this ESL, Energy Sparing Learning. It takes almost no battery energy for them to remember their facts then. It's not EST, not energy sparing teaching. It takes more effort on your part than working out of a book, but it is effort that always works. So we have these multiplication cards available on our website if you're interested in using them. You can just go to www.diancraft.org, D-I-A-N-N-E-C-R-A-F-T.org and order them if you want and then email me and let me know what kind of successes you have.